everybody. I am Sharon West, Sharon West Fine Art. Welcome to my studio. I am really excited to be here today to do a demonstration of my impasto sunflower art. I am a brand ambassador for Blick Art Materials. And so all the materials that you're going to see me demonstrating are on my brand ambassador page at uh, blick.com, dickblick.com. So let me uh, show you a few of my sunflower pieces and then I'll show you what I'm gonna demonstrate. This is uh, an impasto dem um, acrylic piece that I did used with a palette knife or created with a palette knife. Um, and since today is National Bee Day, I thought I would show you this one as well. This is a new series that I'm doing. Um, they're not finished. They're gonna have, um, art or words, inspirational words, um, collage on the sides. Uh, and so I've done bees, I've got some sunflowers like I showed you, I've got um, a guitar. This one says, let it be by the Beatles. I've got some daisies. And these are all copper on the edges. Um, and here's one of my hearts. So this is gonna be a new series I'm working on. They're all done with the same products and the same techniques. And so today I'm going to recreate this sunflower. It's called Sunflowers in the Blue painting for you all. So let's get started. Move this out of the way here. Hopefully you all can see my desktop. So this is a uh, 16 by 20 um, pre-gessoed canvas. Um, it's got an, uh, enough sort of give to it where I can really control the paint on it. Uh, so I really like to use these pre-stretched canvases. I gessoed it so that the, the paint um, would adhere well. Uh, so let me start by showing you some of my paints. Um, I really like this Utrecht Studio Series acrylic paint uh, because the, um, the, it, it's got very good pigment in it. Um, and I mixed my paint with acrylic um, gel medium so that the te I can get the texture that I need. Uh, so this is the medium that I mixed with this paint so that when I apply the, the paint to the canvas, you can see it stays raised onto the canvas. So it's really important that you use acrylic medium if you want to do this type of art. Um, I have tried it with just paint and you don't have the same uh, relief that you do when you use this gloss gel. So this is kind of the secret behind creating this highly textured work. So let me get started. I thought I would show you um, how I mix my colors. Um, what I do is I start with the gel medium. And you have to keep in mind that when you use the medium, it does dry clear, but it's white when it's wet. And so you have to sort of with your own eye and you'll get used to it, account for the fact that this paint is gonna get darker um, when it dries. So you can see it sort of lightens up um, a little bit because the, the gel medium is white, but again, it, it's going to dry darker. So what I like to do is I mix them on these paper plates here, and I like to create sort of a, um, a, a range of values my palette knives, um, starting from the lightest to the darkest. And that way, when I pick up little pieces of the different values, when I lay it down, it, it just adds kind of a beautiful effect. So let me get some of this on here, starting with my yellow color. Actually, I might need some more. And I know people really enjoy watching me mix paint, so 
Um, and then what I do is I draw that darker color into the lighter color. So then I've got all these different values to the paint into the lightest one and just draw it in. And you can see how the yellow kind of drags into the white here. And so I, I do incorporate that into my, my artwork as well. So just a little bit more of the medium, the gel medium. Um, so if anybody has any questions, just jump in. I can see the questions. I'll be happy to answer them. Tell me where you guys are from. Tell me uh, if you've seen my art guest artist page on uh, lickartmaterials.com. I've got several videos on there of me creating different uh, different art. So th this is going to be the paint for my sunflowers. I'm going to set that aside right now. And I use a lot of baby wipes to clean my palette knives. Um, just a quick word about palette knives. So if you're not familiar with these, um, they're sometimes called paint knives. These are mine. Um, I was just chatting earlier with the, the Blick people. These are, have become kind of gunky with, with uh, the amount of paint that I end up always using on my on my knife, but I kind of like the sculptural look of them and they actually fit my hand perfectly after I'm done painting over and over. So, um, but I do keep the blades as clean as possible. Sometimes the back will drag into some paint and create kind of a cool abstract look um, to my painting. So I don't really mind that they look like this. Um, okay, so let me, color I already started with. <clears throat> So for the background, what I like to do is do sort of an ombre look. Um, start with the lightest value of this kind of teal color and then go down to, um, to full strength. So I'll mix the gel medium in here, white. And go ahead and that create sort of a paper plate of values. Where you've got darker, and you go sort of to the solid ring. So that's how I'm going to start my background. Again, the top, sort of the sky is going to be lighter. And with this kind of painting, really, you really can't make a mistake. Um, I like the imperfections. They kind of add character to, um, to the piece and makes each, you know, obviously all art is individual, but um, start building the color a little bit. And I try to work fast because once I get the flowers down, I like to sort of, I'll show you how I, I work the background paint into, into the sunflowers as well. And it adds kind of a dreamy look. I'll explain that more a little bit later. So I'm just quickly laying this down. I like to work fast because it gives it kind of an organic feel to the piece. I do paint the sides always, unless I'm doing it for a client that requests that I don't, just to make it a little bit easier to frame. Some people, a lot of people prefer not to frame things. Um, 
and so they prefer to have the the sides painted so that it has kind of a more finished and modern look. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll I'll just paint the front and just sort of touch up the sides later. Uh, I also paint the back, make a complete finished look. So I think I'm gonna try to do a little bit more white and blend this a little bit more. the darker. Let's see, I've got a couple questions. This is Sandra, do all the paints need to be opaque? Um, I don't think they would need to be opaque. Let me think about that for a minute. Um, I guess I guess they do. I mean if you if you just use the the um, gel medium it would dry clear. So you could do that if you have the application for it that you need. Um, and then you could always apply paint over. I prefer to mix it with the paint because that's just sort of what I, I like to do. So let me hold this up to see if you guys can get a better look at the sort of the background. I don't know if the color is showing up as well. But anyway, so I try to do the lightest to the darkest with these sunflower. Um, paintings and get some more. Uh, what I like to do is I like to put in my my leaves and my centers and then add my flower petals. So let me get some centers going. And I start with just I'm using burnt umber to create the center, the brown center of the flowers. And I lay them on there because it sort of allows me to design the composition of the piece. So I know where all my flowers are gonna go. And then after I do all that, then I add more, I add more, um, leaves afterwards. But this way I just go in and and I can compose the piece. So there. There. You can see some of the background is, is going into the into the center of the flower. And I don't mind that. I kind of like that. It adds interest. I try to use a lot of complementary colors. Let's do a couple here, there, one there, here. Here and I think here, just sketch it in. I'm going to do one that's you can't see the center, but I'm just going to make a mark there so that I know where that one's going to go. And so I like to do sort of odd numbers and generally follow the rule of thirds. So if I divided this in thirds, I've got a flower here, got some petals here, got a flower here. Got stuff going on here, here, here. So I think I'm roughly um, adhering to that. I have another one down here. So, let's, so those are just blocking those in. I'm going to keep working on those. Um, so let's get some. Let's get some leaves going. So as you can see, I'm almost out of my gel medium. So 
okay, I have gallon, I buy it by the gallon. Um, but I use quite a bit and it really pays off texture. Start with that green. Brilliant green. And I'm gonna go down to sort oops to a phthalo green here. Maybe order order. Maybe add a little bit of my medium yellow for the lightest value. So I've got a little yellow, I'm going to mix it into the green and then I'm going to go down to the phthalo green and and that way I've got all my values here and I can I can just go for it when I need to. Phthalo. using any white because I really want to keep the brightness. I don't want to dull it. Someone's asking, is the gel medium used with all the paint colors? Yes. Well, you don't have to use it in the background if you want the background to be sort of more flat. I like to use it in general because I just love texture. So, so this, this value will be used more for the highlights and this will be used more for the leaves the general leaves and this is sort of the shadows here. But you know, if some of this gets on here and it, it ends up on my handle and goes in, that's all the better. So I'm very, very loose with that. So let me um, get some of these. I brought all these knives out to show you, but I'm gonna move them so I can get them together here. Okay, so I'm gonna start by just sort of blocking in some of my leaves. And I'm gonna start with the deepest value here. So, and they're big swirly leaves. Um, Also going to give the impression of some stems here. Now these may or may not show when it's all done, but I'm going to go ahead and draw those in here. And I just use the side of my palette knife to make that straight line, sort of touch it. And they don't have to be totally straight. You can, you can sort of bend them as we all know. Things in nature aren't, they're perfect, but they're not 100% symmetrical. So let's put a few more in here. Okay, so I've got some I like to do the leaves sort of near the stem. And like I said, I'm starting with the deepest value, so it sort of gives an outline. More over here. And then I'll go into my medium green here and then add some highlights after that. I'll just sort of throw this paint into it. Like I said, you know, there's not, no perfection in the, I'm not a perfectionist and I like that. <laughs> Um, let me get some highlights going. 
where the sun might hit these leaves. I don't even know if this might not even be bright enough. I can just throw some actual more yellow on here. Let me get some more yellow going. Uh, because what I've learned with this is, you know, the contrast is really what makes your painting pop. So um, I used to be a little bit more timid about lights and darks, but I realized that really having some distinct highlights and lowlights add a lot of character to your work. Could you do this with oil paints? I am not an oil painter. Um, I think oil paints naturally have the um, viscosity that you would need, but I think it would be extremely expensive to um, to do with oil paints. But you know, somebody you know maybe the Blick people will know more than I know. So now I'm just going to put a few blocks of simple green here and there because what's going to happen is my um, my sunflower petals are going to lay all over those and then you can see sort of the layering just like they would in nature. Um, so let me bring this up and fortunately I don't know that the camera is picking up the, the beauty of the colors, but the colors are really gorgeous. So let me tip it to the side so you can sort of see the texture and how much it's popping out off the canvas. Okay. So let's work on some sunflowers on some of the, the actual flower petals. I'm going to use a smaller palette knife for that. And again, I'm going to start with my deepest value, which is this, um, let's see what it is. It is the medium orange, the Utrecht medium orange. Again, the pigments in these paints are fantastic. So um, you really don't need to use a lot of them to really, and the, the medium value is a medium yellow. And then I mixed it with a little white for the, the lightest value. So I'm gonna just start with some of this orangish color and just put in some orange here. And sometimes you can see the green has picked itself up from the from the leaves, which I'm not crazy about a lot of that happening, but I don't mind some of it happening. Um, I just wipe off my knife and keep going. So how many of you out there are palette knife painters? I've got a little bit more than I want. How would you recommend varnishing something like this? I do um, do a spray varnish because I really like the shiny um, finish to it. So I, I use a gloss spray varnish for this. I like to sort of give them the impression that they're being windblown as well. And I'll, I'll enhance that a little bit more when I go, when I add some of the other, the lighter yellow values.
So these are going to be sort of underneath the lighter petals. Okay, I think I got them all. Oh, there's just, this one's going to not. This one's going to have. Going this way. Clean off this knife. And all of these are going to be in the background. So you're not going to really see this deeper color that much. But it's definitely going to be there and it's definitely going to be important. So I'm going to use my larger palette knife now. Clean it off. Let's paint it over. I think I'm going to need a little more. More in here. much out. Like I said, I buy it by the gallon, so no worries there. Mix in a little bit more, make some more of this. I've got quite a few flowers here. These, with this step now, I'm a little bit more careful about the actual shape of the petal. So I like to sort of do a scoop on the palette knife and then just gently lay it down. I touch the canvas so you can actually see the background. Um, and it just adds a little bit more depth. I like to try to curl these leaves around. Again, just a little movement. So there is one. And I'm going to come back in with the lighter value at the end. So let me just work on this one. See how the palette knife leaves the shape of the petal there. And again, I push in and I can see the blues and the greens and the other colors just coming right through. It adds a lot of character. Again, just a scoop and then a gently laying it down and pulling it up at the end. A little bit of my green there on the on the knife, so I'm going to clean that off. I don't want too much. I still want these the green and the yellow to be distinct from each other. I'm creating these blooms. So I got three looking good here. I'm um, going to keep working on them, then I'm going to come back in and add. Um, this one is going to be a bloom that's sort of facing down, like it's just the side. Add the head of the flower, the green part here. And then with this one, I'm going to make sure you actually do see a stem. Just a little. And then 
along with the stem. And I make sure my little round palette knife or rounded palette knife here can do a really pretty leaf with this one. Highlight it. Let me keep working on the blooms and then I'll get back to the, the leaves. I'm also going to go in and do more in the centers. Those are just there really to be blocked, to block um, out the, the location. So, a little bit more paint here. in creating the bloom shape adding just a little twist around for movement and pulling it down so someone's asking me uh, instead of gel medium would modeling paste create a similar result modeling paste would create a similar result the only thing with modeling paste is that as opposed to the gel medium, modeling paste has more of a white, um, it dries more white. So when you're adding it to your paint, it will lighten the paint color and it'll stay that color. Um, and then the only other thing about modeling paste that I've noticed is I really like the, um, the shininess. I like I like uh, my work to be very shiny. Um, and with modeling paste, I think it's more of a, a more of a dull finish. But maybe that's what you want. It just has a different effect. But as far as the texture, definitely you can definitely get some amazing texture with modeling paste. But trust me, I've experimented with every product out there. I've even gotten roofing material. <laughs> Thinking, why not that? Um, and you know, everything has its pros and cons, but I have found in my work that the quality of these Utrecht materials and the, uh, the quality of the paint together, they're just, they have a lot of synergy. Um, they work together really well. Um, the chemistry of them, um, you know, they were made for each other. Let's put it that way. So that's why, you know, after experimenting with all kinds of different types of uh, texture mediums, I have um, decided to stick with these. So let's see. Any more questions? guys have any more questions let me know these are all great questions i've um definitely been through a lot with texture trying to experiment with different products like i said even things that are not normally art supplies uh but i came to the conclusion that these are really the this is the best combo for my work so this is what i use let me get some I have to move my canvas, I think, to reach here. So what happens is I'm laying down the bloom, the petal and just dragging it along. And so you can see the deeper value is there. It's the, sort of the more recessed petal. And and that way it just gives a sort of more um, 
finished look to each bloom. So someone is asking, how long does this piece take to dry? Oops, something's happening. Sorry about that. Um, this piece will take uh, probably a minimum of three days to a week to dry. see. Okay, sorry, everybody. I think, oh gosh, this thing changed now. Let me see if I can just turn it. Sorry, it's sideways now. I got interrupted by a phone call. I guess that's how those things go. If I turn it around, I'm not going to be worried about that. Let's just turn it around so you guys can see the whole painting. There you go. So let me add some more. I think I'm going to have to move my camera around. I don't know if you all can see it. Is everybody able to see? Sorry, everybody, if you want to. Okay. Now it's upside down. Let me. Try it this way. There. I think people can at least see it right side up. So I'm going to have to move. Well, that's okay. Um, now I'm going to put in some, some highlights on some of the blooms here. Because keep in mind, this is all going to dry darker. Not a lot darker, but you have to account for that. I recently learned about white sunflowers. I'm going to do those next. Um, I think they're beautiful. I had never seen them before. How and where do I sign? I'll show you how I sign. I have kind of a unique way of signing. Okay, so one thing I like to do, let me add some more. Add some more leaves in here. Just to kind of more greenery.
I said I've got green underneath the blooms and I, now I've got green on top. So it gives you a little bit more perspective. Do I ever let it dry between colors? I have done that and I don't like it. And I'll tell you why, because if I were to put paint, if I were to, here's a dried one, this one is dry. So if I were to put now paint on that, it would, it wouldn't sink into the paint. Obviously it's hard and dry and it would, it doesn't, um, flow and meld with it at all and it makes it look almost like well like it was done separately it doesn't it doesn't work very well um, so I have tried that um, it's not my favorite effect but one of the things I do like to do with a brush when I'm getting close to the end is just put a little water on my brush and, you know, the paint is starting to dry. Just do a little, just do a few outlines here and there. Um, and it pulls the paint from the leaves, for example, and just gives it more of a movement to the background. So I'm going to touch this. I've got a little green on my paint, on my brush. I've got a little yellow. I'm going to just pull it around here and just sort of reshape those blooms in a way. Um, but it adds kind of a cool effect. And if you don't, if it has too much color, then you just keep working in, into the background or you can hit it with your palette knife again. And that's another reason why I, um, I don't like to let it dry between layers. I like the melding of the background and the um, actual, what I've painted in here. I like just a little bit pull, of pulling of the paint. And it also adds shape. If you wanna shape the blooms or you wanna shape the if you want to shape the um, leaves and it brings the background in too. It's a kind of a dreamy look. Again, I really love the movement. And it, I like outlining things as well. So when you do this, it does create an outline effect as well. So, sorry everybody that my canvas moved. I got a phone call and it just messed up my orientation on here. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get a little bit more, uh, I like to add a little sense of purple to my, you know, obviously they're complementary colors. Let me get, Here's a, another jar of my acrylic gel medium because uh, I used up that whole new one. And I'm going to add it to some purple paint I have already here on a, oops. And I like just to put a touch of purple. It just goes so well with the green and the yellow and it just brings the piece together, I think. So here, mixing it with some gel medium. Not too much. I probably have, I'm not gonna use all this. Uh, I probably have too much on here. But I'll, I'll, I'll use this sort of, even though it's a darker value, I'm gonna call it a highlight. Um, just to touch the centers here a little. And then what I'll do is I'll put some on my brush too. 
and swirl a little bit around in the background. And I might just touch some of the leaves as well. You don't want to overdo it. So let me see if you guys can see this. Got a little shadow there, I'm sorry. Uh, but you can see the texture. And get my brush here. So just taking a little tiny bit of this purple, I'm going to water it down and I don't want to overdo it. Pull some around here, sort of as a shadow, but also just as a way to incorporate it in. It just adds interest. So someone was asking about signing it. So what I think I would like to show you is, let me figure out where I'm gonna sign this one. Sign it over here in this corner. Actually need a couple more leaves there. Lighter sunflower here in this corner. Uh, what I do is I just grab your average bag and I pipe it. So let me see. I'm going to make it green so it sort of blends in. I, I could do purple, but I think I'm going to make it, make my signature green. So I just fill up the corner of a baggie. Very simple. I don't care if the paint gets mixed up. Now I got all the little colors. I might throw a little tiny smidge of purple in there. Uh, may or may not get, get to the tip. But that's what I do. And then I'm very careful about uh, grab a pair of scissors. Very careful about just cutting a little small tip off the end. I actually need my glasses, but I'll do it without glasses. And then squeeze the air out here. And I just sign with my last name. So it's not real obtrusive, it's the same color, but you can read it. That is pretty much it. Hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed watching me create this painting. Um, please head over to the Blick uh, featured, my Blick featured artist page where you can uh, see me doing other demonstrations. I think I have an angel and a koi fish and another painting. Um, so I think that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, you can find me um, in my Facebook group, Sharon West Fine Art uh, Insiders Group, and um, on my Facebook business page, Sharon West Fine Art, and SharonWestFineArt.com. If you've got any more questions, I'll be getting onto the feed, and I'll go through and answer them as I can. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening. Thanks for tuning in. I'll hold it up.